Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read John 3, John 3 to 8, Proverbs 22, and Psalm 59. Let's get started. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jews by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who came from God, and no one can do the signs that you do, unless God is with him. Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, and he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born uh, of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear it sound. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said, How can these things be? And Jesus answered, Are you the teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we are saying. And you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but will have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, and uh, whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judge. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than, rather than the light, because their works were evil. Uh, everyone does, who does wicked things hates the light, and does not, and does not come to the light. Light, lest his works should be exposed. Exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the, Jude the Judean countryside, and he remained with there with them and was baptizing. John also was baptizing at Anan near Samar, because water was plentiful there, and people were coming and being baptized. And a discussion arose between some of John's disciples and the Jew over purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who is with you across the Jordan, show whom you bore with you. Look, he is baptizing, and all are going to him. John answered, A person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given to him from heaven. You yourself bear me witness, and I, that I say, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. The one who is the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hits him, who dresses greatly in the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this knowledge of mine is now complete. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He is of earth and belongs to the earth and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven is above all. He bears witness and speaks uh, to what he has seen and heard, uh, yet no one receives his testimony. Whoever receives his testimony has set the seal to this, that God is true. Nay, for he whom God has sent utters the words of God. He gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. And whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, and the wrath of God remains on him. Now, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, then he left Judah, Judea, and departed again and for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar. He fulfilled that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Just Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, wearied as he was from the journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came into draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. A Samaritan woman said to her, How is it that you, a Jew asked for a drink? From me, a woman of Samaria. And, uh, Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and, uh, no, and who it is that I was saying to you, saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. And the woman said to him, so you have nothing to draw draw water with, and the well was deep. Where do you get that living water? Well, he's greater than our father Jacob. He gave us the well and drink from it itself, as did his sons in his lifestyle. And then Jesus said to him, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I give him will become him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. 
No, we're in the center. So give me this water. So, so that I will not be thirsty. I'll have to come here and get to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered her, I have, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. We have had five husbands, and the one you have now, now have is not my husband. Now, what you said is true. The woman said to her, So I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this matter. Now, do you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship? Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this matter nor in Jerusalem will we worship the Father. You will worship, you worship what you do not know. You worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming is now, and is now here, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, and when he comes, he'll tell us all things. Jesus said to him, I am, I used to be too, am he. Now just as his disciples came back, they marveled that he was talking with the woman. They did not say, what do you see? Or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into the town and said to the people, Come see a man who told I, me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? So they went out of town and were coming to him. Many of the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to him, Has anyone brought him something to eat? And then Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say, They are yet four months, so then comes the harvest. And look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who keeps reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, and one sows and another reaps. I sent you to, I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. I'll send labor, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of that woman's testimony. And he told me all that I ever did. Uh, so when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of the woman and because of his word. And he said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe. We have heard for ourselves, and we know that this indeed is the Savior of the world. After the two days, he departed for Galilee. Galilee. <clears throat> So when he came to Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, having seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the feast. But they too had gone to the feast. So he came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had made the water wine, and at the keeping room there was an official who saw himself. When this man heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he asked him to come. He went to him and asked him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So Jesus said, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said, You are your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus wrote to him and went on his way. And as he was going there, his servants ran him and told him that his son was recovering. So he asked them when the hour he began to get better. And they said, Lest today at the seventh hour the fever left him. The father knew that the hour was knew that was the hour when Jesus had said to him, The son will live, and he himself believed. Oh, and all his hassle. And this is now the second sign that Jesus did when he had come from Judea to Galilee. Now after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, an Aramaic called Bethsuda, which had five roof, roofed colonies. In these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. But a man was there who had been an invalid for 30 years, 38 years. And Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time. He said to him, Do you want to be here? The sick man answered him, So I have no one to put me into the pool where the water stood up. And while I am going, another steps down before me. Uh, Jesus said to him, Get up, take your bed and walk. And I at once the man was here, and he took up his bed and walked. And on that day was the Sabbath. On that day was the Sabbath. Now the Jews said to the man who had been here, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to take up your bed. Uh, the he answered me. The man who healed me, the man said to me, Take up your bed and walk. And then he asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? Now the man who had been here did not know who it was. But Jesus had withdrawn as there was a crowd in the place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said, See, you are well. Sin no more, and that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had healed them. And this is why the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered him, My father is working now. 
and uh, until now, and I am working. This was why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was calling God, even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. So Jesus said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of his own accord, but only that when he, only what he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, this is the, that the son does likewise. And the father loves the son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And greater works than these will only show them, so that you may marvel. For as the father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the son gives life to whom he will. For the father judges no one, and he has, he has given all judgment to the son, that all may honor the son, just as they honor the father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who has sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but is passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, and now is coming, and is now here, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, and as he, and he had give, has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice, hear his voice, and come out. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment, and he can do nothing on my own. And as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is, is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I am my bad witness about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who bears witness about me, and I know that the testimony that he bears about me is true. He sent a drill, and he has borne witness to the truth, not that the testimony I receive is from me. But I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and test shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in the light. But the testimony that I have is greater than that of John, for the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I am doing. There are demons about me that the Father has sent me. And the works that I am doing bear witness about me that the Father sent me. And the Father who sent me, he has himself one witness about me. And his voice you have never heard, his form you have never seen. And you do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures, because you think that in them you have eternal life. You have eternal life. And it is that they bear witness about me. Uh, yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive glory from people, but I know that you do not have the love of God within you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. How can you believe when you receive glory from one another and do not see the glory that comes from the only God? Do you not think that I will accuse you to the Father? There is one who accuses you, Moses, on whom you set your hope. For if you believe, Moses. And believe Moses, would you believe me? For he wrote to me. And if you do not believe his writings, how will you, how will you believe my words? After this, you went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him, because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sea. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the pastor with the feast of the Jews was at hand, lifting up his eyes there, and seeing that a large crowd was coming to work. Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread, so that these people may eat? And he said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has a fish, and there's five barley loaves and two fish. Uh, well, but what are they for so many? The Jews said, Have the people sit down. Now there was so much grass in the place. So the men sat down. Uh, about five thousand in number. Jesus soon took the loaves, and when he had given them, he distributed them to those who were seated. So those are the fish as much as they want. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves, left by those who had eaten. Each of the people saw the sign. They, when the people saw the sign, they. <coughs> That he had done, they said, they said, this is indeed the prophet who was to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got her into a boat, and started across the sea to keep him up. It was now dark. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. Come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. And when they rode about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat. And they were frightened. But well, he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. And they were glad to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land to which they were going. 
On the bread, next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, and that Jesus had not entered into entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away. On the boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boat and went to keep him, seeking Jesus. And they found him on the other side of the sea, and they said, Rabbi, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are not, you are seeking me, Wait, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, to which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father says to you, and they said to him, What must you do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, and that you believe in him whom he was sent. So, so they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? And the fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and it is, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus the son said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my father who gives you the true bread, bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to, life to the world. They said to him, So give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall eat not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. And I say to you that you have seen me, and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to him, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. No, this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. No, raise him up on the last day. For the Jews grumbled about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this is not this Jesus, the son of Jesus? His father and mother we know. It doesn't it does how does he now say how does he now say I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, You do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I'll raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. And the fathers ate the bread in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. You will not eat of this bread, you will live forever. And the bread that I give, and that I'll give for the life of the world, is my flesh. The Jews then disputed over themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in me. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up in the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me. And I am him, as the living Father has sent me, and I live because of the Father. So whoever feeds on me, he or us really will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, and not like the bread the Father ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these, Jesus said these things in the synagogue, as he taught at Cape Mount, and many of his disciples heard it. They said, This is a hard saying, but who, who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples would grow grumbling about this, said to him, What well, do you take offense at this? And then what if we were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? And then it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help. There's no help at all. The words with that I have spoken to you are spirit and mind. But there are those, there are some of you who do not believe. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the father, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life, and we have believed, and I have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve? And yet one of you is the devil. He spoke to Jesus, the son of Simon Iscariot, but he one of the twelve was going to betray him. And after this, Jesus went about in Galilee. He would not go about in Judea, because of the Jews were seeking to kill him. Now the Jewish feast of grace was at hand, so his brother said to him, Leave here and go to Judea, that your disciples may raise, also may see the work that you are doing. For no one works in secret if he seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. To the world. And not, for not even his brothers believed in him. Jesus said to him, My time has not yet come, yet, but your time is always here. 
the world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify about it that that its works are you. You are not to the feet. I am not going up to this feet. My time has not yet fully come. After saying this, he remained in Galilee. And yet after his brothers had gone up to the feast, he also went up, and not publicly, but in private. But in private. No. The Jews were looking for him at the feast, saying, Where is he? And there was much muttering about him leading the people. And while some said, He is a good man, others said, No, he is leading the people astray. He has the fear of the Jews, and no one spoke openly of him. But after the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and began teaching. The Jews therefore marveled, saying, How is this that the man has learned when he has never studied? So Jesus answered him, answered them, This teaching is not mine, but he who is who sent me. If anyone's will is to do God's will, he will know where the teaching is from God, or whether I am speaking on my own authority. The one who speaks of his own authority seeks his own glory, that the one who seeks the glory of him who serves him is true. And in him there is no force, has not Moses given me the rule, yet none of you keeps the rule. Why do you seek to kill me? The crowd answered, You have a demon. Who is seeking to kill you? Jesus answered me, I did one work, and you all marvel at me. Moses gave you circumcision and from the floor, but from and you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. And if on the Sabbath a man receives circumcision, so the law of Moses may not be broken. Are you angry with me, but because on the Sabbath I made a man's whole body well? Do you not judge by appearances, but judge with the right judgment? Now the people of Jerusalem therefore say, Is, this, is not this the man whom they seek to kill? And he is speaking it openly, and they say nothing to it. And they say nothing to it. Can it be that the authorities really know that he is the Christ? And, but we know where this man comes from, and the Christ, where the Christ appears. Of Christ appears, no one will know where he comes from. So Jesus proclaimed, as he taught in the temple, You know me, you know where I come from. I, I have not come of my own call. You sent me as true, and him you do not know. I know him, and I for I come from him, and he sent me. So they were seeking to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. Yet, yet many of the people believed in him. They said, When the Christ appears, will he do more signs than this man has done? The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering these things about him, and the chief priests and the Pharisees sent officers to arrest him. And then Jesus then said, I'll be with you a little longer, and then I am going to him who sent me. He will seek me, and you will not find me. Where I am, you cannot find me. And Jesus said to one another, Where does the man intend to go that we cannot find him? Does he not intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What does he mean by saying, You will seek me, and you will not find me? And where I am, you cannot come. When the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, none of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And now this he said about the Spirit, when those who believe in him were to receive. And as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And they heard these words, some of the people who said, This really is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Has the Christ come into Galilee? Has not the scripture said that the Christ comes from the offspring of David? And it comes from Bethlehem, the village where David was. So there was a division among the people over him. None of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. The officers then came to Then came to the chief priests and Pharisees. He said to them, Why did you not bring the officers and Pharisees? No one ever spoke like this man. And the Pharisees answered him, But have you recently been deceived? Have any of the authority of the Pharisees believed in him? But this power that does not know the law is a curse. Nicky Demons, who had gone to him before, who was, not, who was one of them, said to him, Does our Lord judge a man without first giving him a hearing and learning what he does? They were like, Are you from Galilee too? So I should see that no prophet arises from Galilee. They went each to his own house. Own house. But Jews went to the man of all Early in the morning, early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and talked to them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in our adultery. And placing her in the place, they said to her, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of the adultery. Now the law of Moses said, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. So what do you say? What do you say? This, this they said to test him, but they might have some charge to win the back from. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. Yeah. And as they continued to ask me, he stood up and said to him, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at him. And once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. And uh, when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older ones, and Jesus was left alone with the women standing before him. Before him. He stood up and said to him, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? He said, No one. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and from now on sit no more. And again Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. 
Now he calls me and will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, You are better than witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. But Jesus answered, Even if I do bad witness about myself, my testimony is true. Now I know where I came from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. You forget, even if I do judge, my judgment is true. For it is not I alone who judge, but I, I am the Father who sent me. In your will is written that the testimony to your people is true. And the one who bears, and the one who bears witness about himself. And the Father who sent me bears witness about me. They said to him, Therefore, where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. Yet who you know me, you will know my father as he is not the words he spoke in the treasury. And as he taught in the temple, no one arrested him and arrested him because his hour had not yet come. So he said to them again, I am going away, and you will seek me. Now he will die and you say, Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, Will you kill himself? So he said, Where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, You are from the world, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told I told that you that you were dying of sin. And well, unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sin. They, so they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said, Jesus said to him, Just what I have been telling you from the beginning. I have much to say about you and much to judge, but he sent me as true, and I declare to the world what I have heard from him. So they, they did not understand that he had been speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said to him, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and I will do nothing on my own authority. I speak just as the Father taught me. And he said, and he is with me. And he has not left me alone. He has not left me alone. For I always do the things that are pleasing to him. As he was saying these things, that many believed in him. And so Jesus said to the Jews, said to the Jews who believed, who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offering of Abraham and have never been enslaved anymore. How is it that you say you, you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Everyone who practices sin is a slave of to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever, the son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free instead. Indeed, well, I know that you are offspring of Abraham, and yet you seek to kill me because of my, because of my wife lies no place in me. I speak of what I have seen see with my father, and you do know what you have heard from your father. And he answered him, Abraham is our father. Abraham is our father. Jesus said to him, but if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works that Abraham did. Now, now you seek to come, and now you have told you the truth from my heart from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works that he works your father did. He said, You are not born in sexual immorality. You have one God, even though. Jesus said to him, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God, and came from God, and I am here. I came from my own accord, but he sent me. He sent me. And I do not understand what I said. It is because you cannot bear to my hand, my friend. You are your father, the judge, and your will is to do your father's desires. He is a mother of humility and does not say in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, but he is a liar and the father of lies. Now, because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. No tell of me convicts me, or, convicts me of sin. And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Now, if of God, hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. The Jews answered me, You are not right in saying you are a Samaritan and have a demon. Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own God, there is one who seeks you, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my way, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, And now if you know that you have a demon, Abraham died, and as did the prophets. And yet you say, If anyone keeps my way, he will never taste death, and never see death. The Jews said to him, Now if you know that you have a demon, Abraham did. Die. As to the prophets, you are easy. If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. And you better than our father Abraham, who died. And the prophets die. Why do you make, make yourself out to me? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is it my father who glorifies me. And can you say, He is our God, but you have not known him? I know. If I were to say that I do not know him, it will be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced. Rejoice that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have only seen Abraham. Jesus said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, 
Before I even had one item, so they picked up stones to throw at him, and the Jews hid himself and went out of the temple. And as he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sin? This man or his parents, so that he was born blind. Jews answered, It was not that this man sin, or his parents, so that the works of God might be displayed in him. And you must write the works of him, and you say, Not his death, now is come, when you heard of him, as long as I am in the world, and the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made marbles to the crystal light. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the light and said, Proverbs, Proverbs 22. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver gold. The rich and the poor need to go. Need to go. Uh, the Lord is the maker of man. The prudence is dainty and hot and not, but the simple God is left for The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is for riches and honor in life. For once the snares are on the way of the crooked, and whoever guards his soul will be far from them. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when, even when he is old, he will not depart from him. The rituals over the poor. Over the poor, and the borrower is a slave of the land. Whoever sows for justice will reap the land, and the rod of his fury will fail. Whoever is a bountiful eye will be blessed. And when he shares his bread with the poor, no one is scoffed, and strife will go, and quarrelling and abuse will cease. He yield with purity of heart, and his speech is gracious, and will have the king in his prayer. And the eyes of the Lord keep watch over the north, and he overthrows the words of the traitor. The slave says, There is a line us, and shall be killed in the streets. The mouth of forbidden woman is deep, and when he with him, the Lord is angry, which will fall into it. The Lord is bound up in the heart of a child, and the rod of discipline dis drives it far from him. Whoever oppresses the poor to increase his own wealth, or gives to the rich, will only come to poverty. And incline your ear, and hear the words of the wise, and incline your heart to my knowledge. Your way will be pleasant if you keep them within you, and if all of them are ready on your lips. And all your trust may be in the Lord, and I have made them known to you, even to you. And I have, not, have I not written for you thirty sayings of kinds of knowledge, that are making you know what is right and true, and you may give the True answer to those who sent you. Do not rob the poor, because he is poor, or cross the earth with dirt at the gate. And who the Lord will plead their cause, and rob of life those who rob them. Make no friendship with a man, give it to anger, nor go with the restful man, unless you learn his way and entangle yourself in a snare. In a snare. And uh, be not one of those who give pleasures, and who put up security for debts. Give them nothing with which to pay, and why should your bed be taken from under you? Do not move the ancient landmark, as your fathers have said. Do you see a man skilled in his work? And you will stand before him, so you will not stand before a skilled man. Psalm 59. Deliver me from my enemies, O God, but protect me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from those who work evil and save me from bloodthirsty men. For behold, they lie in wait for my life. Foolish men stir up strife against me, for no transgression or sin of mine, O Lord, now for no fault of mine. They run and make ready. O wait, come to meet me and see you, Lord of hosts, our God of Israel. Or as you start to punish all the nations, spare none of those who treacherously plot evil. And each evening they come back howling like dogs. And prowling around the sea. There they are, bellowing with their mouths, with swords in their lips. Well, who, they say, who hear us? But you, O Lord, laugh at them. You hold it of the nations in derision. O my staff, I will watch for you. O you, O God, are my fortress. My God and my sister for love will meet me. God will let me look and triumph on my enemies. Heal them not, lest my people forget. Make them totter by your power and bring them down. O Lord, our shield, for the sin of their mouths, the words of the lips, let them be trapped in their pride. And will the cursing and lies of the earth consume them in wrath, consume them till they are no more, that they may know what that God rules over Jacob ja ja to the ends of the earth. Each evening they come back howling like dogs and prowling around the sea. They wonder about the food and growl if they do not get their food. I will sing of your strength. I will sing aloud for your steadfast love in the morning. I will you have been to me a fortress and a refuge in the day of my distress. And my strength, I will sing praises to you. For you, O oh God, are my fortress. The God who shows me steadfast love. Now the star and I shall now to the Lord's prayer. Please bow your heads. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. You will be tomorrow on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as you wish to forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.